I am here now is the Neil Breen smash hit phenomenon where he showed the world that God is here. Pissed. I'm disappointed in your species. And really fucking weird. Because Neil Breen has no idea how to structure a story. Have I failed them? I once again have to break this down by character. And the first ones we meet are these two, who at the very least know how to party. But it all goes downhill fast when the mutant cross between James Gandolfini and Tony Romo plays Russian roulette with a semi-automatic handgun. And somehow fucking lives. You're crazy. Then, after a few drinks from their empty beer bottles, they see Breen and do the normal thing of lighting him the fuck up. So Breen does exactly what you expect. Your weapons cannot harm me. Strips them naked, knocks them out, and leaves them there to die. They stay like that until the very end of the movie when they just get up and drive away. This is low rent on a Ferris, who's really annoying. Yeah, we're finally producing results generating solar power, as well as wind turbine power generation. And a complete fucking psycho. After getting sh canned from her job for writing on the walls with her own feces, we're gonna have to lay you off. She begins believing this doll is her baby. I love my baby. And takes it for regular walks. And I have this baby. During one of the walks, Jared from Subway rides by and eats sh right in front of her and her sister. <laughs> <laughs> wow. F you, Jared. Anyways, she gets talked into being a crack whore. You'd be great at that. Way too easily by her sister. I'm getting kind of desperate. They spend most of the movie topless and strung out on drugs. Once you're high, you won't remember a thing. But don't worry, because things end up working out for her. Shut the f up. At the end of the movie, she's still a crack whore with a fake baby, but she gets the honor of spending the rest of her life Go with her. Have a full, long, and healthy, happy life. With a homeless man she's never met before. What? It's a Neil Brain movie. You got off easy. This is Man in Wheelchair, because that's as creative as Breen gets. He spends the entire movie getting in everybody's way ah! the hell, man? and being a huge drain on society. <laughs> Move, dipshit. Why the fuck are you just sitting there? He tells us he has terminal cancer. I only have a month to live. And it's the first time I can ever remember rooting for cancer. His only dream in life is to see the Welcome to Las Vegas sign really close up. I always wanted to see this before I died. I swear to God, that is so fucking sad. Towards the end of the movie, he picks up a toy that was dropped by Anna's toy. Your baby dropped his toy. Green thinks that not stealing the fake baby's My Little Pony toy from a fucking Happy Meal is such a heroic act that he cures his cancer and turns back the clock to transform him into young man in wheelchair. But because Breen can't do anything right, he gives him a really douchey haircut and makes him live the rest of his life with the insane crack whore. This is Anna's twin sister. You're my twin sister. Halfway through the movie, we learn the shocking twist that she actually has a job and a boyfriend. This fucking sucks. And she just does crack whoring on the side as a fun little hobby. I'd like to do any of these two guys at the same time. She gets fired from her real job. We have to lay you off. For being absolutely insufferable. I'm an environmental activist. 
of solar power, wind, and energy fuel efficient systems. And I'm so passionate about this. So now she has to double up on the whoring and Breen is her main customer. Because he decides this isn't awkward enough, he shows us he's into some really f***ed up shit and bangs her while wearing the zombie suit. At the very end of the movie, she's desperate for more of that zombie brain ass and searches all over the desert for him, but ends up collapsing and dying of heat stroke. This is her boyfriend, Aaron, spelled all fucked up. While she's out whoring, he's breaking into people's cars and stealing their shit. After stealing from a total of two cars, he's a world famous car burglar known by the Global Crime Syndicate. We've heard a lot about you. He tries to join them. I want to join your gang. But him stealing those two boxes and two bags devastated their entire operation. Bring an unwanted attention to us. So they slit his fucking throat and pump bullets into his lifeless body. This is the crime syndicate, who are the most likable people in the entire movie. We're in it for ourselves, for the payoffs. And it's not even close. We'll kill anybody who gets in our way. Even though they're richer than shit, they're down to earth and their headquarters are these burned down houses. They also have a unique system for calling dibs. I get her first. No! But deep down, they're all about family. It's about business. No, it's family. Jared Fogel. Wow. Somehow infiltrates the group as an undercover cop. But they magically figure it out and punch the shit out of him for a really long time. You start to feel bad, then you remember Jared's a pedophile, so fuck him. While they spend 90% of the movie being awesome and doing the right things, they go and fuck it all up by letting Steven Seagal, who just ate Weird Al, into their club. I like what I see. That's unforgivable, so as punishment, Neil Breen crucifies them all. Harsh, but fair. Now, the man himself. His character is either the being or he just misspelled his own name. Knowing him, it really could go either way. But whatever, because he's not fucking around this time. And after crashing this stupid crystal ball into the Nevada desert, he goes full cyber breed. But he quickly abandons that, which is good, because it's really fucking stupid. Instead, he walks around the desert wearing nothing but a lab coat like a perverted doctor. Also, sometimes he's Steven Tyler. His first line is a real gut punch. I'm disappointed in your species. And what species is that? The human species. Damn. Other planets that I've created in the solar system are doing very well. I don't think he knows what solar system means, but we can. No, we must do better. Or he'll decapitate all of us like he decapitated these poor babies. Can the brain give us any help? I've given them everything. Really? I've given them everything. Everything? Everything. Fuck. Okay. After stealing their clothes and truck, he goes for a joyride around Las Vegas before running into the fat kid from the Sandlot who's all grown up now. After Breen successfully spits his A-game, they then have a very graphic 25-minute love scene. After that, he spends most of the movie playing red light, green light with random strangers and making them bleed from their eyes. 
not just characters in the movie, but the audience as well. He comes around though and begs humanity to have some self-respect. Respect yourselves. He sees the irony in that, so he gives humanity a second chance. I will give them one more chance. But not those babies, they're still fucked. When he sees her trying to chase after him, he just waves at her as she collapses and dies. Then he flies away like a fucking boss. Now for the real plot. The entire movie is a Jacob's Ladder scenario from the perspective of Gandromofini. We know this because you can't play Russian Roulette with a fucking semi-auto. You're crazy! No, he's fucking dead. We also know the gun's not just empty because he fires off two rounds right after. All the women in the movie are just variations of her, which is why they all dress the same with the same style top, unbuttoned, and with no bras. Shut the f up! The crime syndicate are all people he used to roll with, which we know because we see him as a member of the f***ing game. Steven Tyler is actually playing the role of death, coming to take him away. Oh, Breen, you did it again. Any parting wisdom? The human's dreams, they can come true. Thanks, bro.